Bible study born for a time like this. You are not limited by your circumstances. You are limited by your lack of access to truth. You were born for a time like this. There is more revealed knowledge of the kingdom of God than ever before, and along with that, there is more opposition to the kingdom of God than ever before. Your determination, your commitment to walk as a son or daughter or father will bring amazing success or devastating failure. Don't wait for your breakthrough to be joyful. Be joyful so that you're in a position to receive breakthrough. Very important. The enemy will try to get you discouraged so you will not have the courage and the strength to make it. David wasn't being realistic when he faced Goliath, and Jesus defeated the enemy by his declarations. What Jesus said and how Jesus lived was the same. Luke 4, 13 through 14. And when the devil had ended every, the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him, that is, stood off from him, until another more opportune and favorable time. Then Jesus went back full of and under the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee, and the fame of him spread through the whole region round about. You see, Jesus went into the wilderness full of and controlled by Holy Spirit. Jesus perfectly yielded to Holy Spirit to allow Holy Spirit to bring victory. By experiencing victory, Jesus came out of the wilderness full of and under the power of Holy Spirit. Notice the relentlessness of the enemy. The enemy put Jesus through a complete cycle of temptation. The enemy stood back to where he could not be noticed but strategically at a place where he could observe continually and see what the actions of Jesus were. So he could, of course, sneak in once again. The enemy was relentless in attempting to find an opportune and favorable time in which he could attack Jesus. Well, look at the result. Look at John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, and undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. We were born into a war. We have an enemy. However, Jesus persevered to emerge victorious over the world. Jesus deprived the world of its power to harm us. You can either live in the world and get the crap beat out of you, or you can live victorious in Christ Jesus. John 14.30, I will not talk with you much more, for the prince, evil genius, ruler of the world, is coming, and he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him, and he has no power over me. And Christ resides in us, guys. This tells us something. You see, the enemy is a liar. The enemy works through deception. Holy Spirit will lead and guide you to all truth. Jesus was completely dependent on Holy Spirit because of Jesus' commitment and determination to be led by Holy Spirit. Even though the enemy continued to watch him and continued to persevere to destroy Jesus, Jesus finished his ministry, revealing the ineffectiveness of the enemy in his life. The enemy had no claim on Jesus, had nothing in common with Jesus. There was nothing in Jesus that belonged to the enemy, and the enemy had no power over Jesus. 1 Peter 5 6 through 8. Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation. Under the mighty hand of God, that is due time, he may exalt you. This is really important and is often taught incorrectly. We humble ourselves by saying about ourselves what God says about us. You have a low estimation of yourself outside of Christ Jesus and a very high estimation of who you are as one who lives in Christ Jesus. I am given the privilege to live under the mighty hand of God. In Ephesians 6.10, the word says for us to be strong in the Lord, to be empowered through our union with him. We are to draw our strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Outside of Christ Jesus, I'm nothing. Living in Christ Jesus, yielding to Holy Spirit, I am unstoppable, just as he was. My estimation of myself outside of Christ Jesus is very realistic. I am not equipped to win the battle that I have been born into. Not on my own, but living in Christ Jesus, I live out the victory that he already obtained for me. In verse 7, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him, and he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. 
We've been taught how to have victory over the enemy. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. The key to victory is casting your cares once and for all on Jesus because he has already defeated the world. The definition of anxiety is feeling of worry and nervousness or unease about an imminent event or something or fear or something with an uncertain outcome. And the enemy uses anxiety to pull us out of our place of being in Christ Jesus. The battleground is always in the mind. Living in this world, you will be exposed to situations that could give the appearance of having an uncertain outcome. You see, the enemy has to get you off your foundation mm -hmm, of trust of Father. The enemy attempts to get you in a state of unease or disease. The lack of peace opens the door for physical disease, yes. Disease starts in the mind and manifests it in the body in many times. In verse 8, be well balanced, that is temperate and sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times, for the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. The enemy is relentless, and he's focused, and he has one objective, to destroy your life. The enemy does not have a lot of conflicts of schedule. The demonic realm does not have a date book full of social functions. The enemy has a very specific agenda to kill, steal, and destroy. Back to Ephesians 6 again. We were told to put on the whole armor of God so we stand against the attacks of the enemy and the wiles of the enemy. The definition of wiles are devious or cunning stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what their adversary wants. A wile is a ploy. It's a scheme. It's a maneuver used to lure and entice. A stratagem is a plan or a scheme, especially one used to outwit an opponent or achieve an end. To protect ourselves against the wiles of the enemy, we must remain well balanced. If I know something is going to attack me, I will take a stance that prepares me for the attack. I will dig my heels in and be well balanced. My enemy is described as a roaring lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and to devour. It's interesting that the enemy is described as a roaring lion. The enemy will always first attack through deception. The roar is to throw us off guard and get our attention of potential danger. And the enemy seeks out who he can destroy. Who has the door open even a crack? The enemy does not have the ability to destroy anyone. The enemy must first work through deception to cause yourself, to position yourself really to be vulnerable. Instead of standing in with both heels, you're kind of wobbly or you have all the weight on one foot and you can be knocked off guard very easy. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are to keep you in a place of stability. Holy Spirit works through your life to minister characteristics of the kingdom of God that you meditate on in order to cause a transformation in your life. The enemy is constantly looking and seeking. Don't give the enemy an open door, even a crack. Don't let discontentment position yourself because that gives the enemy access to you. We are to remain balanced, sober of mind, vigilant, and watchful. The way to effectively remain in the state is to continually meditate on what and who you are in Christ Jesus. The work of the enemy is to get your attention off of Jesus and give your attention to his efforts to cause you to take on anxieties, worries, concerns, and care. Does that sound familiar to any of you? You are either going to be effective in Christ Jesus, rolling your care upon the Lord, or you will be in a state of anxiety being troubled and unable to effectively remain balanced. Now this also parallels Matthew 6, 33. Jesus teaches us not to be worried or anxious about anything. The things you're going to eat, drink, or wear, Jesus says, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. Strive after his way of doing and being right. And then all things taken together will be given to you besides. Awareness of the kingdom of God, awareness of who you are in Christ Jesus, is the key to freedom and protection. When a person is always consumed by anxieties and worries, it reveals that their trust is not in a relationship with Jesus. And the access that they have to the kingdom of God, you see people in that state soon open the door for the wiles of the devil. 
In like manner, when people do not seek first the kingdom of God, they have to go to the world for the things that they need. When people depend on a dependency is developed on the world and they open themselves up to anxieties, worries, and stress. But they also open themselves up for discontentment, which is like opening a door for the devil. Please, peace, joy, and contentment have the ability to keep you well-balanced and to protect you. Seeking the kingdom first enables you to keep things in perspective. The devil is very crafty at what he does. The devil will demonically entice activities and desires that make you vulnerable. The enemy wants you playing in his playground. So unlike with Jesus, the enemy has things in common with you and has access to cause trouble or even destroy your life. You see, I have fruit trees, and I can always tell when the fruit is coming to its peak because the fruit will draw a lot of flies. Garbage will also draw flies. Anything that is decaying will draw flies. How is it that fruit flies just appear in your house? Flies just have the ability to detect what they desire. <laughs> the same is true in the realm of kingdom of darkness. I don't know how it works, but the demonic realm has the ability to sense fear, worry, and anxiety. The enemy has the ability to detect discontentment. The demonic realm carefully monitors the words you speak. It's interesting. Father gave us authority and dominion over the earth, and he actually honors it to the point where he wants to be invited in. He doesn't just barge in to make corrections, even if those corrections are for our best interest. In the same way, but in a perverted way, of course, the demonic realm seems to need our agreement to open the door to death, loss, and destruction. And it can also be seen by very tiny steps that seem like they wouldn't make any difference at all. So when the enemy attacked Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus only spoke the word of God. Jesus was not moved by emotions or anxieties. Jesus was only moved by his relationship with fathers. So too, many people open the door for the demonic realm by displaying discontent and just by grumbling and complaining that opens the door. And Jesus teaches us that the flesh can never be satisfied. Unfortunately, however, people seem to be confused that they have an ongoing battle with discontentment when they spend the majority of their time walking in the flesh and feeding the flesh. The flesh is not looking out for your best interest. There's no profit in it. When you continually feed the flesh, you continually create the size of the monster that needs to be fed. When you continually feed the flesh, you continually create the size of the monster that needs to be fed in it once more and more. The enemy has the ability to detect fear, discontentment, and discouragement. The enemy seeks those which he can devour. We can open the door to the enemy by not being well-balanced, by not being sober-minded, by being easily offended, by being sloppy, lazy, vulnerable, and by taking risks that have been initiated because of the deception of attempting to feed the flesh and make it happy. Meditate on those words. The way to live in victory is to continually meditate on who you are in Christ Jesus. You must rely on Holy Spirit and yield the Holy Spirit to be led to all truth. You must allow Holy Spirit to minister to your spirit and bless you with the fruits of Holy Spirit. You must remain consistent, content, rooted with a good foundation, thankful, loving, giving, and well aware of your responsibility and the conduct that you walk in as being a son or daughter of Father. We have opposition and we live in a war. Jesus showed us how to successfully walk in this world but effectively be a word, world overcomer. Jesus spoke his way out of the wilderness. He did not think his way out. The gospel isn't for your agreement. It's for your transformation. Your history with Father creates the foundation that you live from. Circumstances and situations arise to get you discouraged, to get you to speak and act opposed to the blessing and the access you have to the kingdom of God. You have to learn to hear from Father by thinking like Father. It doesn't matter how impossible something looks. It only matters what a person is able to believe. There's always a solution. The enemy wants you to be attracted to the world, so you become conformed to the world, so you will live by standards of the world. 
so you'll be cursed by the limitations of the world. If we get true revelation of the kingdom and what we have access to, anything in the world will fail to get our attention. We must have the revelation that the devil perverts things to cause us to be attracted to them. No one overdoses from eating too much broccoli. However, ten th however over 10,000 people a year die from alcohol-related car accidents? Think about it. The devil entices through deception. The devil takes things that have the ability to control us, to turn us into slaves, and he demonically entices us to indulge in those things that cause us to be discontent. We need this or else. Then he can lead us down the path of complete destruction. If you have vices and need other things more than the Lord, you're missing the picture. My contentment is not based on the behaviors of others. It is received through fulfilling who I am called to be. When we get true revelation of the kingdom and what we have access to, anything in this world will fail to get our attention. You become discontent when you focus on taking instead of giving. Self-pity is causing calling God a liar and telling Jesus that what he did for you was just not enough. You were born for a time like this. I was born for a time like this. There is more revelation of Father and his kingdom than ever before in the history of the world. Father is completely satisfying. You must gain this revelation. The world has to grow in distraction to compete with the constant increase of the revelation of the goodness of Father. This generation embraces change like no generation before. People are ripe for change. Things are coming to a head. Things are going to extremes. People will either go deeper into darkness, living for themselves, or they will embrace change, be transformed by the love of Jesus, and become agents for change and walk out the revelation of Jesus. Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. Holy Spirit has been grieved. The Spirit has been quenched. Holy Spirit needs sons and daughters who have the courage to walk out the authentic gospel. Holy Spirit needs to have sons and daughters who will embrace the truth that Holy Spirit has come to reveal. We now have the technology to efficiently and effectively reach the world. What do we have to offer? Will people be taken deeper into darkness or will people be offered a lifestyle that is impossible through our own human strength? Revival awakens people to Jesus. Revival is a renewed attention or interest to something. A reformation is making changes to something with the intention of sending it back and setting it back really on its correct path. It's time to revive the lost and to bring back truth and abundant life. Jesus revived us. He came to reveal truth. Our lives need to reveal truth. We have the technology to start a revival that escalates into a reformation. We can't be conformed to that which we are called to revive. We are a gate, and a gate is a place of transition. Holy Spirit uses us to be a gate, to usher in the revival that will cause a transformation. We are used by Holy Spirit so truth is revealed through us so that people are gathered to Jesus. We are the gate, the place of entrance. We give Holy Spirit access into the earth. Holy Spirit ministers through us in truth, and as we walk out the truth, we reveal truth to cause a revival. People are revived from a dark, dead state to be made alive. We need to reveal Jesus so purely and so relentlessly that we will cause a renewed interest or attention, and that's revival. The renewed interest will go to become a reformation when we walk out Jesus to cause awareness and then change breaks out with the intention of getting things back in the correct path. We need that change and we need it now. Because people are open for change more than any other generation. Because they are conditioned for change. When kingdom truth is revealed, they will embrace it. So however, people will not embrace compromise. However, but we can't bring revival if we have not been transformed to reveal this truth. If people live in compromise, in conditional ethics, and conditional love, they will not be revived unless they are exposed to something different than how they now live and what they now embrace. People are open to change, but they will only change if they are introduced to the authentic. People will not embrace what they can't see. When we have the ability to reveal truth because we are filled with Holy Spirit, 
stop living in compromise and allowing Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to the world. The world will embrace Jesus because they are conditioned to accept change. However, these people are hungry for change, also for demanding, because they have much access to so much information. We will only get their attention if we live out a truth that can't be disputed. And this is the place where our testimonies need to be shared, to have a truth right here in front of their eyes. People are so embedded in darkness that they need to commit to be vessels for Holy Spirit to reveal uncompromising truth. So they will turn to the truth and the veil on their hearts and minds will be lifted. The kingdom of God must be revealed. The kingdom of God is the truth of Jesus. The truth of Jesus is the kingdom of God. Our lives are nothing if we do not reveal the ultimate that there is to reveal. All things are possible to the person who is able to believe what we are willing to commit to in order that we will position ourselves to be able to believe without restrictions. Effectiveness rests solely on our shoulders. We have been filled with truth. We have been filled and given truth. And that's Holy Spirit without limitations. Jesus said that Holy Spirit will lead us to all truth. Well, all truth has not been revealed, so that means we need to yield to be stretched to come to the ultimate effectiveness, which is to truly reveal Jesus and to reveal him fully. The definition of theology is the study of the nature of God. Theology is only a theory until the truth of the theory has been established. Faith takes acknowledgement to experience. Faith is not just having the guts to acknowledge. Faith is a commitment to demand to see what you believe despite any opposition. Who you really are will determine what you will really do. When we receive the revelation that we are truth, then we will walk in truth. Don't allow the world to entice you to compromise. When you walk in compromise, you fail to walk out the truth of your life. When you fail to walk out the truth of your life, you fail to fulfill who you were created to be. When you fail to walk out your role as a son or daughter or father, discontentment will drive you to find your fulfillment in the flesh. Since the flesh cannot be satisfied and it wants more and more, the discontentment will be all-consuming and lead you into position of slavery. The devil tries to pull you in to making carnal threats instead of spiritual declarations. And back to slavery. So many people say, well, if I make my own choices, then I'm free. No, actually, you're a slave of the devil. So don't feel pressure to convince someone the gospel is true. Let the world feel the pressure to try to dispute Jesus. When the gospel is really revealed through your life in power, authority, and access to the provisions of the kingdom of God, let the world feel the pressure to explain how a believer walks out abundant life. The demonic realm will torment in the mind until you concede to give what the body demands despite the potential disastrous outcomes. When you don't know who you are, you don't know what you possess, and you don't know your purpose. So you are deceived not to be responsible for walking in your ability. Then you will be irresponsible for failing to steward the ability that was the basis of your responsibility. Read that a few times until you get it. So in closing, you must know how significant you are because the war is about you. And you are not limited by your circumstances. You are only limited by your lack of access to truth.